This is Pappy Van Winkle's 15 year old family reserve. Pappy Van Winkle is a legendary name in the bourbon world. It's not only widely known for its complex and unique flavors, but it's also widely known for just how hard it is to get a freaking bottle. Why isn't it possible? It's just not. Why not? But the Van Winkle name hasn't always been as legendary as it is now. According to the family, this story dates back four generations to the original Julian Van Winkle. The original Pappy never really intended on getting into the whiskey business. However, after working at the W.L. Weller & Sons as a traveling salesman, he went on to be the president of the Stitzel Weller Distillery. This is a man who simply tried to be honest and make a good product. And that motto still rings true four generations later with this bottle that bears his face. Julian Van Winkle Jr. took over the distillery in 1964 and ran it until 1972 when the family sold it. After the sale, Junior resurrected the old Rip Van Winkle brand using old stock from the distillery he had just sold. Julian Junior passed away in 1981 and Julian Van Winkle III took over and set him on the path to producing this fine whiskey we know today. Apparently there's only one name in the family, right? Like you just, you're gonna be a Julian. The family just set out to make the best whiskey they could possibly make but they didn't really have a plan or budget to market it. They were just hoping if they could put the best product possible out there, the people would just find it and fall in love with it. They never really had ambitions of having the biggest distribution or putting out the most bottles. Just make it really good and people are gonna find it. And sometimes, as in in this case, it just happens like it's supposed to. They won some awards in the 90s, got a little pop culture boost from folks like Anthony Bourdain and now, Good luck finding a bottle. That is the most glorious bourbon on the face of the planet. In 2002, the family joined a joint venture with the Sazerac Company, and this whiskey is now exclusively produced at the Buffalo Trace Distillery using the family's weeded recipe. Let's see what the bottle tells us. On the front, there's not much to see. I mean, we have a portrait of the OG Pappy himself, Julian Van Winkle. Pappy Van Winkle's Family Reserve Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. 15 years old, 107 proof, bottled by old Rip Van Winkle Distillery, Frankfort, Kentucky. On the back, we get a little story. Pappy Van Winkle, 15 year, 107 proof. At the age of 18, my grandfather, Julian P. Pappy Van Winkle Sr. started working as a salesman for W.L. Weller & Sons Wholesale in Louisville, Kentucky in 1892, just after he graduated from Center College in Danville, Kentucky. He would be known soon after as one of the finest whiskey makers in the country. This bourbon is a younger expression of our famous 20-year-old Pappy Van Winkle's family reserve. The whiskey in this bottle was produced according to our exclusive family weeded recipe recipe and it was specially selected from barrels in the heart of our warehouses here in Kentucky. This fine bourbon has remained undisturbed for 15 years to age in deep charred, heavy oak, untouched by human hands, unhurried by time. I'm proud to set my family name upon it. Julian Van Winkle III's signature. Let's look at the distiller's notes. Nose, an elegant and sweet aroma with caramel corn and vanilla. Taste, features big oak flavor of leather oak and complex fruitiness. Finish, finishes smooth with notes of spice and oak tannins. As I mentioned, we're gonna judge this bottle on six different criteria, but before I get into that, it really helps me out if you'll hit the like button on this video. Maybe consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. We're also trying to take the channel to the next level, and your support on Patreon and channel memberships here on YouTube really help us accelerate that growth. If you're interested in supporting, Links as always are in the description. If you really wanna help my bourbon budget so I can afford another bottle of Pappies here, you can get cool merch like our horse collector shirt here only at bruzel.com. That's enough talking, let's get into drinking. Here is my blind review of Pappy Van Winkle 15. Keep in mind it's blind. I had no freaking idea. We might've ranked it a little bit too low. I, I think I might, it might've been just a little, God, I don't know, I don't know. This one may have broke the scoring system already. I, just watch it, just watch it. Let me know your thoughts. Now the first criteria is aroma slash flavor, and it's gonna be 50% of the overall bruisal score. Oh my God, that is that is special right there. It smells like a Weller. They may have snuck a Weller in. I thought they would. I thought they would sneak in a Weller on these to really throw me off, but that is, oh my God. That is like exceptional bright, cherry, red fruit, oakiness. That is just a magical, magical aroma. I cannot imagine a whiskey smelling much better than that. 
I don't think that's a Weller. It follows through on the red fruit, but it's, it's confusing me a little bit. It's got some oakiness to it that I don't normally get on any of the Wellers that I own. Now we've got a couple of new ones in that I haven't tried, so I don't know if they've opened one of those and I'm just not aware of the oakiness, but it's got a little age to it. It's not William LaRue Weller proof. It doesn't seem to have that proof point to it. So you get this nice, bright, sweet red fruit up front, and then you get this oakiness kind of dominating on the mid palate and then that lightens up a little bit, but I still get a ton of oak on the finish. So overall, the flavor slash aroma on this is really good. The best we've had in this series of whiskeys that we are reviewing, but I think it's older than 10 years. And I, I tend to think like eight, 10 years is where I typically like whiskey. So I'm gonna bet this one skews a little older than that, 12, 15, I don't think it's an 18. And honestly, if it's a 15, it takes age really well. So I'm gonna say this is a 12 year old whiskey. So that like it's got some oakiness to it. And that oakiness owns the flavors and the complexity just a little bit. But the oakiness takes away from it. Like if this were a younger version of whatever this is, then I think it would be better to me. But overall, it's still the best whiskey we've tried in this batch of six that we've been reviewing and I'm going to give it, whew, I don't think it's a 90 for me. Cause I, like, I'm not gonna put William LaRue Weller, which is my favorite of all time at a hundred. I'm not gonna put that at a hundred. So if I, if I try to think like, where would I put William LaRue? Maybe a 90? Like I, it can be beat. I don't wanna ever put anything at a hundred. Cause that means that's the best whiskey could ever taste. I need three ounces of whatever this is. Lord have mercy. The oakiness is just killing it. Like that, this is an 85 without the oakiness. If that mid palate evolves into something other than a little bit of bitter oak, it's going to be like next level. So I'm, I'm gonna deduct it down to about an 80. And the next criteria is complexity. And we're gonna rank that from zero to 100, and that's gonna be 20% of the overall Brusel score. And the complexity on that is good. Like that is, has some nice deep flavors to it. I think the oakiness still takes away from it a little bit. Like it's exceptional, don't get me wrong. That's exceptional. But the oakiness just kind of eats into it a little bit. Like it's just a little too oaky to be what I'm looking for. So the complexity of this is good, but the oakiness kills it. So I think it's a little lower than the flavor score. So I'm going to give it a 75. And the next criterion is finish, and it's gonna be 10% of the overall Brusel score. And what I'm looking for here is, what does it leave you with? The more of this I drink, the less oak I taste. Now that I'm on like my third or fourth sip of it and that oak has dissipated a little bit, it just leaves me with this nice, pleasant cherry finish to it. Like that's gotta be top shelf right there. I, I've got my guesses. I, it, I don't know if we should guess, like I don't know if I should try, because if I guess, then I'm starting to skew. If I think it's something, I, I start to skew my review. So I'm, I'm gonna try to not guess so that I've got no ego in this, but that is just a pleasant, I still taste that finish. Like I still taste that finish, so I'm going to give it an 80. And the next criteria is mouthfeel. Like how viscous and thick and how well does this whiskey coat the palate? This has a little bit of proof to it. I would say it's over 100 proof. And so it has a really nice, pleasant mouthfeel. It's not super viscous for something that I think is probably 100, 107 proof. 107 proof is my favorite, like Weller Antique 107. That's why I'm kind of like, is this one of the Weller products I haven't opened? But I don't think any of the ones I've opened are that high a proof. I don't think any of the ones I haven't opened are over 100 proof. I'll guess this in a minute. Like I'm gonna, I'm giving you some clues as to what I think this is. I, I think it's at that, 107-ish, it might be 114, it might be 114, it could be like a Weller foolproof. Like my Weller radar is going off all over the freaking place, but I'm having a hard time placing it in the Weller lineup. Like I just don't think it's quite that high of proof. That instantly leads to other guesses. Mouthfeel pretty good, pretty good. Not as good as the flavor and stuff. So I'm gonna give the mouthfeel on that a 70. So our next two criteria are availability and value, which means I need to know what this whiskey is 
to be able to grade those things. And so I have to open my card here, but I'm gonna take a guess. It's got some oakiness. It feels like it's 107 proof-ish. It tastes like a Weller product. This has, to, somebody had to sneak in the Pappy 15 on me. It can't be the 12 because that doesn't have the proof. It could be the 10. It could be the Van Winkle 10 at 107 proof. I don't remember the 10 having that much oakiness to it. So maybe, maybe I'm wrong, we'll see. Let's drum, there's no drum roll, y'all already freaking know. Like I'm over here agonizing about it, y'all already freaking know this Pappy Van, like it just says, it says Pappy, it has to be the 15. It doesn't say Van Winkle 15, it just says Pappy Van Winkle. But the other ones are a lot technically Pappies. All right, so availability, we gotta think about it on that end of the scale. So like an OFC, impossible to come by. A double eagle in a decanter bottle, impossible to come by. This one's better than that. Zero means you just can't get it. It's impossible, it doesn't exist. They didn't make it. So I'm gonna put a 10 at like a double eagle or an OFC. So this one's gonna be up from that. You can get them. You're gonna have to pay secondary. They didn't make a ton of them, but they're not like some super limited, never can get. They're just, you're probably not gonna get. So I'm gonna put the availability at a 25 on these. And the next criteria is value. If you're judging the MSRP of this bottle at $120, the value is really high, like an 85, a 90 maybe. It, hell, you could argue it's 100 at $120, but that's realistically not what this bottle is. Now mine's the Santa Pappy with the red foil. That was a mistake. This is like a 2018 bottle. We won't even judge that because that has nothing to do with the whiskey inside. So if you have just like a black foil, Pappy 15, what are they, two grand, 2,500 on the secondary market? And so value is not, like that is a fantastic whiskey, but God, how, what kind of life changing does it need to be to be worth $2,000? Like y'all tell me, I don't freaking know, but it's not a good value. This is not like bang for your buck, go get this at $2,000 and try it. So it's gotta be a negative number or at least a well below 50. But again, there are a lot dumber bottles. There are worse bottles at a similar price point that you can buy, right? So like a Woodford Baccarat, where it's, I never even had that whiskey. Probably a good whiskey, but you're paying a ton for just the bottle. Like realistically, the value is in the crystal bottle. I'm gonna put this one probably at like that 25, like well below average as far as value. But if you got it and you're looking for a really special bottle that's gonna taste fantastic, this will do it. There are a lot of good sippers you can have out there that taste great. Like Weller Antique 107, pretty freaking good. Similar to this, not as good as this, but great value even on secondary at a hundred something dollars. So put it at a 25. That puts Pappy Van Winkle 15 year old at a 72. It's the highest rated bottle we have on this system so far. What do y'all think about Pappy Van Winkle getting a 72 and Four Roses single barrel getting a 68.5? May have broke the system already. I don't know, y'all let me know.